In today's video, we're going to be showing you how we painted the roof of the bus. Most people tend to use a white elastomeric paint so that the inside temperature doesn't get too hot, especially in the warmer months. It's very common to see Henry's Tropicool being used as the paint for the roof, but we decided to go with the Gardner Stay Cool. They're both elastomeric paints and it did the same job for about half the price. Plus, we actually borrowed this one from my Nani, who was also painting her RV the same color on the top. So we definitely got lucky there. Two to three coats only took us a couple of hours and we've definitely noticed a difference. As of right now, we are um, just kind of taping everything off and getting ready to spray paint our dash. I'm so excited! Oh, I know. Um, we don't really have the morning to work today, but we figured this is something we can get done quick and easy. And it'll actually uh, um, show a big improvement. Especially in the, on the fr front. Just, or just in the front of the bus, because we really haven't touched it yet. Mm -hmm. It's like the first big thing that we've actually done in the front of the bus. I mean, we've had the seats taken out and all this stuff, but this was like, I think the first thing that we ever touched when we got the bus was we took off these things, but other than that, we haven't really done anything to it. So this being painted, the floor being painted, the dash being painted, this being turned into like um, some more storage and shelving and everything is gonna be awesome. It's gonna make such a big difference big difference so yeah this morning we took some time to take some Clorox wipes and some Windex and everything and just cleaned up the dash a little bit to prep it for painting and now we've got this plastic sheet which I hate because plastic but we ripped it up and have used it to tape off everything that's gonna be black and then we're gonna get started very exciting. Looks good. Give me a thumbs up so I can thumbnail. Don't get closer to the wheel. <gasps> Waiting this for paint. Oh. There you go. In the black? Oh. Here you go. <laughs> Do a sideways so I can get your man bun. There you go. <laughs> After we got the first couple coats of paint on the dash, we started sanding in order to prep for paint. And we sanded for what seemed like hours and hours. Almost half of the bus completely prepped for paint. We have to do the other side. And Trevor has run to the store to go and get the primer. I will not be doing this on that side. That is a waste of tape and it's gonna be a pain in the butt to get off. But the rest of it looks pretty solid, I think. We'll do the tires and we'll do the doorknobs and everything, of course, the bumpers, because those are all gonna be black, but Again, Trevor went to the store to get primer and the 
rust-oleum paint we're gonna be using. When I tell y'all, I looked everywhere for this almond-colored rust-oleum and I finally found it four Home Depots away from me. <laughs> My gosh. The bus has been taped off mostly. Now, for this primer, we need two ounces of mineral spirits or acetone to thin it down to one quart of primer. So about six to a gallon and then two to a quart. And we're gonna see if that thins it down enough to work with my handy dandy new paint sprayer. We'll see. Oh, I already messed up. <laughs> That is a little better. It's definitely already making a pretty big difference. But I need a little more, I think. It's still pretty goofy. Hmm? Maybe not. Oh yeah. That's what we're looking for. But we still got some mineral spirits on top to mix it. Started working pretty well. Looks very nice and clean, all one coat. Yes, yes, and then slowly started getting to this side and started running out about here. Just trying to get a little covering as much as possible. And then we start to die off even more. Just barely got down there. Didn't get up there at all. Barely got up here, not even close to up there. That's why that's just cardboard. And then it stops. Door, got none at all. <laughs> probably not gonna have a lot of videos of this debacle but we're here at sunrise because yesterday when we tried to move the bus it didn't start did it no it didn't our batteries should be at 12.6 and right now they're at 11.98 which is no good we tried charging it all last night and it just didn't charge so we're gonna try to jump it probably gonna get new batteries because we have the warranty on them right yeah but for now, just so that we can move the bus out of Trevor's parents' driveway and back onto the side of the house, we're gonna try and jump it. Hmm? Give me yeah. Started getting pretty late last night when we were recording, so we couldn't get a very good overlook of the finished product, but I think the primer looks pretty good. We started running out, so we didn't get to do the inside of the door, but I think it'll be fine. And then I patched some holes that I found with the automotive patch that I used to do the door, which, by the way, now that it's painted, you can hardly tell that it's there. So, I'm pretty proud of it. It only took, I think, like 30 minutes to an hour to do the whole thing after it was taped up. That was the long part, that took forever. It's also not starting right now. So we're trying to figure that out as we speak. That's why I'm down here. That's why he's down there. Kick your little feet. <laughs> but while he's working on that, I'm gonna be mixing my paint that it took forever to find. So hopefully, by the end of the morning, we will have a nice sandy colored bus. I might have said before, but we're using Rust-Oleum Almond because this was easy. Right out of the can, we couldn't find a color in any other paint that we were comfortable using as far as it being a good quality for a vehicle and hopefully not gonna crack or anything as time goes on. I like the color though. It's a lot darker than I thought it was gonna be. Which is good, because I thought it was gonna be way too white looking. Yeah, so I'm glad it's more of like a beige color. So that's good. Just like the primer, I used 
one quart of paint to about two ounces of paint thinner or acetone or mineral spirits. The mineral spirit seems to be working pretty well. I think it thinned out the primer pretty quickly and it did a really great job. What are you doing? Alright, so we have officially painted the black around the windows and the bumpers. I've done my touch-ups and my touch-ups for my touch-ups. So I think we can finally start peeling some tape. Oh, I can't wait to get this tape off of here. So I want to start off by saying I'm really sorry for the lack of footage of us painting the trim or any of the black accents. It was a very long process. That was very, very difficult. We had to retape all of the windows invertedly, which took a very long time. And then we used black Rust-Oleum spray paint, which overall gave us the absolute best result we could have asked for. But not getting that on our tan background was a bit of a pain in the butt. And again, it took a very long time. It was very tedious, so. This is what we've got to show you guys, and I hope y'all like it, and yep. That's anticlimactic. This is our haul for today that is going to help us build the gray water tank. I also have the actual gray water tank in the garage and a piece of metal that I will show you um, that's going to be used to create a barrier so that the gray water tank stays in place. But yeah, I'll have all these linked down below and it'll shock you with how much this costs, but all right. 
Let's get it over with. This is what I was talking about, this piece of metal. What's it called? What's it called? Father? No. Show me the tag. <laughs> Slotted angle. Slotted angle, 18 gauge. So that fits our three eight threaded poles that are gonna go through it and hopefully secure it to the frame. Ta-da. Focus. Focus, focus, focus. After about an hour and a half, maybe more, of brainstorming, it's been more, of brainstorming. I think we have somewhat of an idea, so we're gonna go ahead and start cutting and Trevor's coming back to us with some more supplies in a couple of minutes. So we're gonna start getting this frame built. I'll throw a time lapse in and then I'll come back when we've got it a little bit more put together. Our tank now has a bit of an outline, which I'm excited about. We've got these pieces that are gonna be secured all the way through. So once they're lined up, this and this will sandwich this piece of, what's this called? Sheet metal between there with for the posts. I think it's gonna look good. Hopefully the lawnmower in the background isn't too much of a bother and you can hear me when I say that we've got the starting point for our gray water tank. It is so little. I know it's only 13 gallons, but we only have 12 gallons actively working on the bus at one time. So it's not meant to hold a lot, but also even if we wanted to, unfortunately due to what people had put in the bottom of the bus, like our fancy, excuse me, Buddha, our AC unit from over here. That is a whole machine underneath there that does not work. And unfortunately we can't take out with the funds and the access to the mechanics that we have. So it does have to stay in, which means that there's not a lot of room under there to put a larger gray water tank. This is actually, was actually ordered to fit the measurements of the space that we have. So hopefully this should do well for us. Um, but yeah, so I'm really excited for what we've got here. I'm gonna go ahead and go through what I did and what I plan on doing. And then I'll show you once I finish it up. So we started off with a piece of sheet metal that's just a little bit larger than the full size of the gray water tank. And everything will be linked down below, but make sure that you buy to the size of your tank. So we started with that sheet and that's just to make sure that when it's mounted underneath the bus that no rocks or anything can come up and perforate the plastic at all because it's not, not very strong plastic. So we want to make sure that it's protected. And then on the outside, we have these slotted angles um, that we bought by 10 feet and then we cut to size. And I have two that are cut to the width of the gray water tank and placed backwards. And then I have these two pieces, which are the length between the two beams underneath the bus. So this beam and this beam, which is what these are going to be mounted into and then secured on the top of the beam. So that gives us these and these are going to be mounted into the beams of the bus. This is just to keep this supported and we'll keep the top because this is going to be duplicated upside down on the top and this is going to keep it sandwiched. It, it'll make a lot more sense when you actually see it together. But for now, we have this little frame. I'm going to duplicate it. The slotted angles, I'm going to duplicate that. 
put it on the top and then I'm going to sandwich this in between the top and the bottom, hook it on with these threaded rods and it should be good to go at least to do a starting fitting before I get the plumbing done. Oh gosh, so awkward, unless you do it all at once. So, here we go. Ta-da! All right, it's a couple weeks later now and we've been driving around so I know it's quite a bit dirty under here, but we eventually attached that three inch wide pipe and a Volterra drain valve that we could attach our Rhino drain hose to so we can dump out our gray water tank at a dump station whenever we need to. We use these wing nuts in order to sandwich the angled bars together, as I mentioned earlier, along with those vibration resistant lock nuts at the bottom just in case anything were to come loose. The top of the threaded rods are attached to our support beams on the bottom of the bus with wing nuts and again those vibration proof lock nuts and yeah the gray water tank is secure and well in its cage and we haven't had any issues with leaks or anything like that. It definitely does its job. <laughs> 